Yeah, just right. I like that beat, don't you? Isn't that good? I like it a lot. Uh, listen, have you ever wondered if there was more than this? I mean, have you, have you ever wanted or desired more in your life? It's really interesting. You know, I may have told you this before, but our daughter-in-law, Gina, taught Eleanor, who's now six years old, and then Josie, who is three years old, four years old, four years old, and then Margo, who's a little over a year, to do sign language before they could speak. Are you familiar with that? And some people do that. And one of the things that they taught them, I got a picture of Josie up here somewhere I want you to see. One of the things they taught uh, all of them, I'm sorry, that's Margo. She would be mad if I called her Josie. What, what they taught them was to say more in sign language. Anybody know how to do it? Somebody show me so I can see. Yeah, here we go. You know how to do it. This is more in sign language. And so even though they can't speak, they would say, she will say more when she's eating. Like if she wants some more English peas, I will gladly give her mine. And she does that. Now, I got a picture of the rest of the family because I leave them out sometimes. There's Jim and Gina. There's Eleanor and Josie and Margo and Jim's back. You know, there's more. There's, there's, there's more. Have you ever longed for it? Did you ever need to know that there was more in your life? You know, here's the thing. Easter's over, right? Last week, great celebration. Thank you for being a part of that last week. And, you know, this is the Super Bowl of all Sundays in the church because we celebrate the greatest event that happened in history, Jesus rising from the dead. But now Easter is over. You know, and, and for the disciples and others who were following him, they must have been thinking, what in the world now? Because here's what was happening. Everything around them was still pretty much the same. The Romans were still oppression, oppressing the Jews and the Gentiles in, in that area. Uh, they, there were people who still had to earn a living, people that still needed to have a life to live. It, it kind of reminds me of, uh, you know, the, the biggest tragedy that we experienced in my life, I've shared with you before, was when my sister was killed in the car wreck. And I was, uh, I think I was 20, uh, 22 years old at the time. And I remember uh, getting up the next morning at, at our house out in the country and I saw, I was up very early, couldn't sleep, of course, and just overcome with grief. And I walked to the window, probably praying to some extent, but also just grieving. And I saw cars going down the road early in the morning, going to work or they were doing something they had to do, maybe going to doctors, whatever it was. And I thought, why are you doing that? Do you not understand what just happened? Do you, do you not understand that the world will never be the same for us again? And I suppose to, to some extent, maybe that's the way the disciples felt and, and all those others who were following Jesus at the time. You know, I know he's alive. At least I'm hearing reports of him being alive. But, but this is the greatest event that's ever happened. I mean, why are y'all still living life as though it didn't happen? As though it didn't happen. Easter's over. And, and you have to ask the question, but there's, there's got to be more. Isn't there more? And, and the answer is yes, there's more. There's, there's more to Jesus than just Easter. We, we know that. There, there's so much more to Jesus than, than this greatest event where he was raised from the dead. There's more to the story of Jesus and God and what he wants for us in our lives, which means this, which means there's more to your story and my story, which is good news for all of us. There's more to experience uh, inside of who God is and what he desires for us and what he wants to do through us and around us. There's more to know about him. There is more to do for him. There, there's more opportunities to experience in life. There's got to be more. There's more. You know, we were made for more. God has so much more in store for us. And that's what we're going to be focusing on for the next few weeks. I chose a, a, a passage of scripture today that is a post-Easter story. It's in Acts. It is uh, about someone who was searching for more, but they didn't know how to get there. So here, here I want to read this with you. It's Acts chapter 8. You may, you may know this story, but let's read it. It says, Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, let me pause there just for a second. Who is Philip? Philip, some, some scholars say this was Philip, one of the 12 disciples. But most scholars say, no, this was Philip the evangelist who was chosen early on in Acts to help direct the feeding of the hungry uh, folks that were in need at the time. So Philip, it said, so the Lord said to Philip, the angel of the Lord said to Philip, go south to the road 
the desert road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out, and on his way, he met an Ethiopian eunuch, an, an important official in charge of all the treasury of the queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship, and on his way home was sitting in his chariot reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. The, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. So then Philip, notice what it says, ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you're reading? Philip asked. How can I, he said, unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. This is the passage of Scripture the unit was reading. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter. And as a lamb before its shearer is silent, so he did not open his mouth. In his humili humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, really good question he's about to ask. Tell me, please, who is the prophet talking about, himself or someone else? Look at verse 35. Then Philip began with that very passage of Scripture and told him, the good news about Jesus. Well, what a great story about somebody who was looking for more. Because here's the reality. For, for all of us, there is a point in our life, and maybe you've already been there, or maybe you haven't gotten there yet. There's going to be a point in our lives where we will want to know more. It, it could be when we face a crisis like our family did, and, and we ask the question, why? Why did this happen or maybe it's a major life decision or a minor one, and you want to know more so that you can make the right decision. It could be a midlife thing or an early thing in life or something later in life for us where we just need to know there's more to this than the life we have right now. So, so my question is this. What do you do? Where do you go when you need or want to find more? Where do, you, where do we go? And just a couple of thoughts. Here's the first one. I think this is really important. When we seek more, when we're, when we're looking for it, we need to search. We must search in the right place. We've got to do that. You know, many of us search for the more in the wrong place. We, we try to find more in worldly ways. And, and, and the world tells us that this is the way for you to experience and enjoy more in life. And so I did it, you've done it, all of us have done it. We chase after that. We search for it there. And when we get that more, we find out, you know what? That was good, but it's just not satisfying deep down inside. This Ethiopian was looking for more. He was probably a Gentile who had converted to Judaism. And so he had made this journey from Ethiopia all the way up to Jerusalem so he could worship in the temple. And after having that experience of worship, he's on his way back home now, and he he's, has this desire to know more about God and God's plan and what's going on. And so he's reading from the great prophet in the Old Testament, the prophet Isaiah. You know, the, the good news is this, when, when, when we need to know more, often here's what we do. We, we go to somebody who's wise, and we ask them for advice. We, we turn to somebody who knows maybe a little bit more than we do, and that's a good option because God places people in our lives who are wise, who can help us. But in this case, the, the wisdom was coming from above through Philip. God placed Philip in the Ethiopian's life in order to help him understand God's plan and his story. You know, notice where Philip started. What did it say in verse 35? It said this, starting with the very scripture, starting right where the Ethiopian was, right in the book that he was reading, the Bible, he begins to tell him the good news of Jesus Christ. And that, that's really important. That he just, He started right where he was and helped him to know about Jesus. Because here's, here's what I believe. The right starting place for us is in God's Word. It's in the Bible. And, and there was a long time in my life where I, I wasn't interested in that. Because you know why? Because I grew up in the church and I felt like I knew the stories. And I kind of knew the story of God and of Jesus. And that was enough. But then I began to dig in and learn more and grow as I did. So Philip shares the story of Christ, and it unfolds right before the eyes of this Ethiopian. And he does it by using that very passage. It's Isaiah 53. Sometimes it's referred to as the chapter 
of the suffering servant, which is all about what happened to Jesus Christ. I want to read just a little bit of it to you, but I want you to think about it from the perspective of what we know now about Jesus and Jesus on the cross. Look what it says. He, he's obviously referring to Jesus, just as Philip told the, the Ethiopian, he had done no wrong. We know that about Jesus. He never sinned. He had, and he never had never deceived anyone. But he was buried like a criminal. He was put in a rich man's grave. We know that to be the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea, a rich man who gave his tomb so that Jesus could be placed there. But, verse 10, it was the Lord's good plan. This was his plan all along to crush Jesus, to have him die on the cross and cause him grief. Yet when his life is made, look what it says, an offering for sin. There it is. The whole idea that Jesus died for us on the cross, written hundreds, hundreds, and hundreds of years before it ever happened. For he will have many, he will have many descendants. Those who believe in him then will be his children. We are. And so it says, he will enjoy a long life and the Lord's good plans will prosper in his hands. Verse 11, when he sees all that he's accomplished by his anguish, he will be satisfied. And because of his experience, my righteous servant will make it possible for many to be counted righteous. That's you and me. Isn't that good? For he will bear all their sins. There's the whole story right there. And, and Philip gets to share that with the Ethiopian. says, I, I need you to understand, I, most likely, if Philip was, was one of the early evangelists, he was probably there when all of this unfolded uh, on the cross on Good Friday. And he's probably already been aware, may have been in those uh, who saw Jesus afterwards. So he said, I saw this happen right here. It's all about Christ. And what he did on the cross, it's all about his plan. And so he heard the good news and he believed it. He believed it. And he found the more that he was searching for right there in that story in Acts. You know, when we find the right more, you know what happens to us when we find the right more? It feels really good. It's like, okay, this is, this is the kind of more I've been looking for. And you know what happens then? There, there's this peace that kind of washes over us. There's this sense of no matter how stormy it is outside, everything's going to be okay. And there is nothing better than that kind of a more. But we have to start in the right place. And that's God's word, honestly. But it's also spending time with Christ because he desires to spend time with us. That's the most amazing thing about the whole story is that Jesus Christ really wants to spend time with you and with me like we deserve that, right? But we don't. But that's what he wants to do. Jesus wants to spend more time with you and with me. There's a moment in the Gospels, in the Gospel of Mark, where, where Jesus says that in a beautiful way, or the story unfolds that way beautifully. Look at it. It's verse, uh, chapter, Mark chapter 9, verses 30 and 31. It says, upon, it says leaving that region... They traveled through Galilee. Look what it says. Jesus didn't want anyone to know he was there. You wonder, why is that? We'll read the next verse. It's because, for he wanted to spend more time with his disciples and to teach them. Isn't that good? And, and so he wants to spend more time with us. He wants to teach us so, so that we can get to know him more, so that we can understand the story better, so, so that we can lean on him more and we can love him more and we can serve him more that's why he wants to spend time with us and the more time we spend with him the more we take on his nature and his character and and something begins to happen inside of us it changes the way we think and the way we act we need more time with him so so let me let me ask you what, what's the more in your life right now what's the more that you want in your life right now max Lucada. Uh, such a good author. He writes this. He says, uh, our hearts tell us there is more to this life than this life. There is more. And, and we need to search for it. And we need to search in the right place. Now, you may be listening to this and you're thinking, more? You, who, who needs more? I, I don't need more. I, I need less. I'm so busy. I am exhausted all the time. I'm worn out. I'm burning the candle at both ends. The last thing I need is more. Well, let me just tell you as your pastor, and let me just tell you in love that that's exactly the person who needs more. 
But, but here, here's the truth. The person who needs more needs more of the right stuff and less of the wrong stuff. Because we find ourselves sometimes taking more of the wrong stuff that really doesn't give us the more that we're looking for. So if you were to choose more right now, what would you choose more of? And here's just some suggestions for you. What more might you choose? How about just more of Jesus as Jamie prayed a few minutes ago? Just, just more of Jesus. Let me, let me spend more time with him, be with him more. More of the life that he calls me to. More in his word, studying his, his word, the Bible. More knowledge and understanding, which is where I'm going to grab that more. Or, or seeing more of what God wants to show me. God, what is it you're trying to show me as I'm going through this mess that's happening in my life? What are you, what are you trying to do? Show me more. What about this next one? Loving more. I need to be more loving. Or, or I, I added this one, saying I love you more. Do you say that enough? I, I hope you do. You know, I, It's important to say it as well as do it. More giving. What about that one? Or more forgiving. There's so much more. More sacrificial, more caring and considerate of others. Being, being more helpful around my house and around uh, the community and the church. There's so much more. And here's the beauty of it. Every time we seek more of Jesus, every time we do that, we get more than we thought we would get. It's true. It's true. The Ethiopian got more than he thought he would get by simply asking Philip, who is this person talking about in this scripture? I mean, can you imagine how God used the Ethiopian after he believed and committed his life to Christ? Well, there's a church father. His name is St. Irenaeus of Lyons. He was, a, he was a bishop early on in the church. And back in the, the second century, he wrote about this particular eunuch. And here's what he says. They actually believed that this was the man's name. They were able to identify him back then. It says, this man, Simeon Bacchus, the eunuch, was also sent into the regions of Ethiopia to preach what he had himself believed, that there was one God preached by the prophets, that the son of this God had already made his appearance in human flesh and, that, and had been led as a sheep to the slaughter, and then all of the other statements which the prophets made regarding him. So, so this, this eunuch from Ethiopia became a preacher and spread the truth of Jesus Christ, the good news of Jesus Christ throughout Ethiopia and beyond. And because he wanted more on that day in that chariot, reading this, this book from the Old Testament, he came to know Jesus and put his faith in him because he was in the chariot with Philip. So, so what more might Jesus have for you right now? What's the more he has for you? We're going to explore more mores in the next several weeks. Uh, it's going to be good. But we can be assured of this because it's true of the Ethiopian that Jesus has more for us, just like he did the Ethiopian. But there's, there's more to the story. I'm not through with the Ethiopian yet. Because there's something beautiful that happened thereafter. After hearing the story and committing his life to Christ, he wanted even more. You know what he wanted to do? He wanted to mark this occasion somehow. And look what he, do he does. It's in uh, the next few verses from where we began our reading today. In verse 36, it says this. As they were traveling down the road, the man said, Look, here's a pool of water. Why don't I get baptized right now? It's beautiful. And in, in one of the other translations says, what is it? What prevents me from getting baptized right now? It's, it's a beautiful passage. Philip replied, if you believe with all your heart, I'll baptize you. The man answered, I believe that Jesus is the anointed one, the son of God. Verse 38, the Ethiopian stopped his chariot. He stopped the procession. All this, you can imagine this entourage heading back to Ethiopia. He says, stop. And they pulled over on the side and they got down into the water and Philip baptized him. Baptism doesn't save us, but it's a public declaration that we belong to Jesus Christ and we're going to profess our faith and we're going to follow him all of our lives. You know, uh, there's some people today who've made that decision. They've decided, says I have decided, they've decided to follow Jesus. 
and to do so by marking this occasion um, in a beautiful way. So the Ethiopian, great story. And, and then look what happens to him. The, the rest of the story, in verse 39, it says this, the man never saw Philip again. Philip wasn't the star of the story. God was. Jesus was. It says he returned to Ethiopia full of great joy. Isn't that good? Because he found more. He went searching for it in the right place, and he got it. So where are you searching for more? Here's some next steps for you this week. I will ask someone to help me understand more about Jesus. Maybe that's you. Maybe you just find somebody and say, listen, I'm trying to get this down, but I, I'm not there yet. Help me. I'll spend more time with Jesus. Listen, all of us ought to check that one. Every one of us ought to. I will seek more of the right thing and less of the wrong thing. We should all check that one too. And the last one, I will ask Jesus to reveal more of himself to me. I could check that one as well. Thank you.